What's up guys, Logan here. And in the last video, I mostly finished up the sign plate. Since then, I have cleaned up any high spots on a granite surface plate, and yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. Now I need to make the accessories to go with it to make it actually work. So I have some scrap steel, which I have purchased, so I need to chop this, machine it to the right height. So then I've got certain spaces for setting the angles, for machining all of the different angles and stuff on the cylinder head. And a little bit of machining and a big mess later, I have myself a bunch of different blocks. So all I've got to do now is a uh, surface plate, a little bit of sandpaper and just remove any high spots and get them to their final dimension. Would you stop that? That should be good enough for now, and yeah, with all of them stacked like this, that gives me uh, the 45 degrees I want for the intake surface. So now I need to get the cylinder head to bolt to this. Now it is not as simple as it should be because there's one thing I need to change and I've already figured out that the head bolts have not shrunk quite how I thought they were going to, so they're not exactly lined up with where they should be on here. So this is actually perfectly where they should be, in relation to the original cylinder head these are not quite so it's another thing i have to alter on the cad and so in the meantime because i want to practice some machining on this i'll need to re-drill these uh, four holes and then i'll be able to do some machining and some quick measuring and marking out on the head and i know exactly how far off all the holes are and now i just need to put it in the mill square it up and i'll just use the DRO to figure it out but first Someone has left a nice big mess for me to clean up. So, in a big mess later, past Logan making it difficult for future Logan once again. Alrighty ho, after all that cleaning, I have the head uh, mounted on here and I have the dial indicator and the collet chuck and I'm just referencing this edge here. I've given it a slight clean up with sandpaper just to remove any rough marks. So at the moment it's on zero and then back there and we're back on zero. Well that didn't quite go according to plan. Uh, this end mill here, the pointy one, and it worked perfectly but it was not quite long enough. So I went to a drill bit and as you can guess Drills walk and are not very rigid and it wouldn't uh, do the job. And that means I can't put both dowels in the plate. But I can put one and I can put four bolts. So that goes on there like that. Bolt it in, I can see if any of this setup is actually going to work or if it's going to be too flimsy. In case I have to do something like this on the next set, I have ordered uh, a proper two flute 8mm and 11mm end mills for the operations for doing these holes. <laughs> Well, there we go, I have the intake done. It just needs a little bit of deburring with some sandpaper, but otherwise, I'm actually pretty darn happy with that. Looks good. The fixture actually felt really rigid. Like, I was taking thin cuts, but that didn't take me long. I maybe spent 15 minutes once everything was set up. All right, so I just whipped up myself this bracket here, which I should be able to bolt to the plate, dial it in, make sure it's square, and then I should be able to back this up against it and then I should be able to set my angles and know that this plate is true and it's not out of whack. Now I've got this all clamped down and I'm super happy with how rigid it is and now I'm pretty darn confident this, this is running parallel to the bed which it should be. I have my new boring head in the milling machine, it is Vertex made in Taiwan, the good quality tools that are actually somewhat affordable. Now I have this cheap boring bar with a carbide insert that's uncoated and it is going to go in here like so but as you can see it is hella long and I have learned recently with all this machining and stuff that steel is actually more flexible than I thought it was. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a little bit shorter just to remove some of the deflection because I know this is going to want to bend. Okay. 
All right, here we go. I have the boring head all set up. I'm currently got the mill in neutral and I'm just turning it by hand. So hopefully I can find the center of this hole and I'm just yeah, incrementally adjusting things so it just touches and then hopefully that's uh, pretty much the center of the hole. Um, I think a coaxial indicator is probably the way to go. I don't have one of them at the moment. Um, boss is just, no, I'm doing it wrong. Okay, well, he, he knows everything, so, all right. And he, yeah, so he's he's warning me this is gonna go terribly wrong. But yeah, so I'm gonna, yeah, quickly adjust this a bit more and see how we go. There we go, a few passes later, the bore is actually looking pretty spiffy, I'm pretty happy with it, and I have an R6 bucket here which I just got off a friend yesterday, and there's a nice tight fit in there, uh, I'll need a magnet to grab that out now, so I will, now I, I just sort of guessed this, uh, <laughs> but I am going to do it properly, so I have a micrometer and hopefully by the end of today I have some telescopic gauges and then I'll be able to measure the size of an R6 cylinder head. So I have two of them on the bench here and I'll be able to measure the exact um, dimensions of where the buckets run in that head and then make sure that when I machine this using my boring head, I get it to the exact same spec. Rightio, so I have an R6 head here, and as you can see, it has had a pretty bad time at the racetrack, so the next step is I am going to be taking a few of the guides out of this and doing some measurements, figure out what sort of tooling I need so I can install the R6 guides in my head over here. So I'm gonna need a special size drill and a reamer, I take it to get it to the press fit or the heat shrink fit that will be in the cylinder head when it's done. So to get these guides out, I think I'm going to need to make a tool, so I get to use my new lathe again. This tool I made is a way to remove them, but if you're definitely wanting to keep the guides or reuse them or not damage anything, you would actually probably want or just a softer material as the cushion here between the two because you can easily damage things. I'm wondering if these valve seats are gonna be very hard to get out. Um, just so I can sort of measure and see what sort of size they are, but I, I don't think it'll matter too much because I'm probably gonna have to uh, make my own or get someone to make them, but I'm gonna try to do it myself. So I'm gonna see if these will come out with a little bit of persuasion. And a little bit of heat, should be able to hopefully get these out. This is gonna to take too long. I think these are going to be too tight to get out without damaging them. Let's quickly measure that, see how close we got. So we went 0 0.03 of a mil too big compared to the bores for the buckets in this head. Okie dokie, so now 
yeah, I'm gonna... Hmm. If you want to see more videos like this, then a like and subscribe it certainly um, helps the channel along and lets me know that you want to see more sort of engine fabrication stuff. And that concludes this video on, uh, yeah, doing some machining and uh, measuring and maths and stuff that I'm a little bit new to. But the next video will be on casting, so you'll be pleased to hear that. And yeah, I've been working hard at it in the background, so it's getting uh, close. I've got quite a few little things that I've had to adjust and perfect. And yeah, the next casting, fingers crossed, is going to be perfect and ready to uh, machine once I've got all these little things sorted out. And yeah, so on that note, this has been Logan from the Motorcycle Forge. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you next time.